man, I want to talk about some music, man, because you know what I'm saying? Music dropped and shit. We was talking about the Yo Gotti. Uh, who else? That, Two Chains dropped. That, I didn't listen to that. that. I'm nah, not, I ain't, I ain't gonna front, bro. I'm not checking for Two Chains. I'm not. Man, I'm sorry. I'm not a big Two Chain fan. So yeah, I'm not at all. But I that know. Gotti, that Gotti, that Gotti classic, bro. Like, I don't know who did his production. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the pr- yeah, yeah. from the production of it, I like the concept of it. If you look at his album cover, the A side and the B side, you know what I mean, and and and, and the way he structured his songs, it's, ma- it's mature. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. It's like yeah. some grown. Yeah. It's like I didn't graduated from some dope dealing shit, and I'm on to like stocks and fucking having land and you know and putting my people right, on. Right, it right. ain't no, you know. It, of course, right. he got some brick talking shit, and you know. Yeah, 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 naturally. But it's more, <laughs> it's it's like an adult fucking, it's some adult content but in you that can, shit. It makes you feel like, damn, man, I need a, I need to stack me up a million <laughs> after you listen to, you know what I'm saying, his, 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 uh, his album, man. And mm-hmm. when, you, when, when you listen to it, you're like, damn, you like, damn, man, guys have been in the game a long time. So, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, when he first, when he, when he first started out, he was messing around with, um, with with uh with, with Kia Shine, with, you know Kia Shine from Memphis. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, I ain't heard that name in a long then, ass time. Yeah, God yeah, yeah. Damn. He signed, yeah, Kia Shine signed, got it, and then got it. Um, got it, bought himself out of his own contract with with, with somebody else for a million dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like this boy, this boy been having bread for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like for Man, a I minute. Heard Kia Shine name in a long motherfucking time, bro. Yeah, it's been a while. Wow. Yeah. Damn, I just have to go on YouTube and see how he how he looked again. Yeah, that's Kia Shine. Yeah, but definitely definitely the Yo Gotti have classic. Yeah, because to be honest with you, I ain't, I ain't never listened to Yo Gotti like that before this album. He has some songs oh, yeah? every now and then. Yeah, he has some songs every now and then that I like, but as far as going to a Yo Gotti album and saying, Let me listen to it, this is the first album I went to and I was like, Oh shit this shit because to me rick ross he dropped the album and that shit was trash to me i'm not even gonna lie man i'm not gonna be like lalo i'm not gonna be like lalo lalo go shit on rick ross regardless <laughs> but because i remember i brought rick ross cd and i posted a picture of him on facebook and he started going in on how that nigga was faking all kind of shit but that rick ross album was trash man i, I was like he should have went the route yo Gotti went but rick ross be trying to be so he be trying to be like <laughs> fucking bigger than you know than life and shit. That yeah, it yeah. was just I I don't know. Yo Gotti yeah. seems he more relatable. To yeah. Me from the yeah. Yeah. Then, I mean the thing about Ross Ross has some good production. I can't I can't front on that. But I mean when it comes to his content, it's like, bro, I don't I don't believe like we I get it. You know what I'm saying? Every rapper has a persona. You know what I'm saying? Where you separate. The actual individual from the rapper, mm-hmm. but when when yeah. your whole persona is straight, you straight CB four. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You you came in, you stole a whole nother man's identity. You feel me? Yeah. You, you don't even pay no respect or homage to the dude. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And you come on here talking about bricks and and, and you a boss and you know what I'm saying? Like I. I get it. Like I say, man, you know, I know I know rappers have personas and they ain't doing half the stuff they talk about. Do that. You know, you know, but man, when you steal a whole nother dude's name, you know what I'm saying? Oh, and yeah. and then talk about his life like it's yours, you know, I can't you respect you, bro. You steal the dude's name and then you low key kind of disrespect the dude, you know what I'm saying? Like as far as when he get out, like you say, he don't pay no homage to him, he don't acknowledge the dude. Like, uh, nothing like that. I right. can see if I can see if Rose said and he got with the real Rick Ross and be like, was like, hey man, I I I, I admire your hustle and all that, your grind and stuff like that. And and that's what made me <laughs> take on the persona of you know what I'm yeah. saying. But it wasn't none of that. It was like fuck him, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Even, yeah, even, and even, and you know, even, you know, even, you know, man, I, I, you know, I did some time with the, the real Rick Ross, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you know, he was like, man, homie ain't, homie ain't reach out to him. You know what I'm saying? He had his people 
get in contact with him and he say, man, you know, his people got in touch with him or whatever. Told him, yeah, 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 he wanted to have a convo with him. They tried, they set everything up, but it changed his number on him, man. <laughs> man. He changed his number on him. I mean, that's what that's what that's what he told me. I can't confirm more than that, but I'm just saying what the actual Rick Ross told me, bro. You know. What what yeah. he, what as far as Yo Gotti, what y'all think about like I mean as far as him not really having the rap because he got like a lot of artists under him that's kind of doing kind of decent and shit like yeah. that youngster yeah. and, and the ESG dude or whatever and yeah know, forty two yeah. Doug and all them boys which forty two Doug is trash and then- <laughs> that motherfucker is trash bro I'm not even uh, what about know. uh. What about the San Francisco cat? He just uh, signed Mozzie. Oh, Yo Gotti just signed Mozzie? Yes, sir. Damn, I didn't know that. Mozzie, cool. He must have paid Mozzie a lot because Mozzie was already doing good without that. Yeah, Mozzie, Mozzie already had a strong following. Mozzie got some nice music too, bro. Mozzie do got some nice music. I'm surprised. My, you know, you know, Rick Ross was trying to sign um, Nip at one point. He was he was going strong trying to sign Nip, but Nip believed in his own, you know what I'm saying, in his own brand. So he didn't sign with yeah, he didn't sign with Ross. But they did a lot of music together. And Ross was like, Yeah, I was I was trying to sign Nip. At that one point, he was really trying to sign Nip. I thought Nip was gonna sign with him. And to be honest with you, yeah, I think if Nip would have signed with him, it would have been a it still would have been a good look for Nip because the type of music they make, I mean the type of beats and I could see Nip, you know what I'm saying, on some of the production that Rick Ross, you know what I'm saying, be on and stuff. But, you know, Nip believed in his own brand. But, uh, yeah, man, as far as Mozzie, shit, Mozzie, one of the best artists on the West Coast, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah Mozzie live. I like Mozzie. I'm, try- I'm trying to think of another artist, and I'm going to leave, like, Kendrick Lamar and them out because they ain't consistent. You know what I'm saying? He ain't consistent. He dropped it four years. You drop an album. I don't know who. I don't know if that. Me, if I'm an artist, unless I got like over a hundred some million in the bank or whatever, I'm not finna wait four years to drop a project. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? I don't know because it's not his label. To be honest with you, uh, Floyd, what what I really thought uh, Kenny Lamar was going to do, I thought he was going to at least try to drop today. Or drop yesterday or Friday, right before the Super Bowl, but he ain't he ain't done that yet. You know what I'm saying? It would be nice if he get on stage at the Super Bowl and say, Hey, you know what I'm saying? Y'all I'll just drop my album, y'all go Spotify right now. Yeah. Cause you, he might put he might put he might pull a move like that. Yo, Kendrick Lamar, he good, but he not that good to be like on some Dr. Dre shit dropping a chronic every <laughs> two years and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Kendrick Lamar, he all right, but man, four years to drop an album. But, Time's but not since we on that topic, but but not since we on that topic, you know what I'm saying? With Snoop buying uh Death Row, do you think that he gonna put Kenny Ken Lamar on that uh on that that record label? Because him and Pee he almost done as soon as he drops his album, they gonna mm-hmm. be done. Yeah, they they and then Drake come and, and then Drake come back. You know what I'm saying? May, 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 maybe Snoop trying to um do some things that we don't know nothing about. You know what I'm saying? You know what? Who knows? Snoop, I think Snoop been bought Death Row, and I think they just leaked the info out because he dropped that. He just dropped the album Friday called Back on Death Row. Yeah. B O T R or whatever the fuck it was. And for him to drop that album, he already bought that motherfucker. He just leaked the information out and then dropped the album that Friday, which makes sense and shit. And like you said, the Super Bowl coming out, the Super Bowl finna pop out, so it made perfect sense. Snoop got Death Row. How much he bought it for? Shit, I don't know. Probably not that much though. He got it. He got it dirt cheap on sale. <laughs> he so did. <laughs> he so on did. sale, huh, man? That. I wonder if yeah. he got all the masters. I wonder if he got all the songs and shit. I'm sure he probably got. Uh, uh, well, I ain't gonna say I'm sure. It may have been some work that way. He got part of um, the catalog mm-hmm. rights to the publishing on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm sure that's part of the negotiations. Snoop bad on picking what? talent though. He bad. He he signed a cat called Jabba Loke or some shit from Long Beach. Jabba Loke is trash. Yeah, I remember Jabba Loke. Yeah, they he remember got, he had the doggies angels at one time. 
Yeah, he had the Doggies Angels. I thought I like one. One of them was actually kind of hot too to me on the Doggies Angels. <laughs> the Doggies Angels. I remember them too. I think they. I don't know if they went platinum too when they first dropped and shit because they was with Snoop. And when you was under hot artists and shit, you was going platinum regardless because it wasn't no streaming. You had to go fucking buy the shit to listen to the shit. So right. I, I think they actually went platinum or gold. I think they went gold, the Doggies yeah. Angels and shit. But they only went gold on the strength of Snoop Dogg, though. Yeah. yeah. But in that, that shit trash. I heard one of them got pregnant and all that shit. And shit. That's all it take for one of them yeah. to get pregnant yeah. and then the group broke up. I can't even really remember yeah. any impact for orders that he brought out. You and know I what mean, I mean? I mean, I'm not going to say Nate Dogg. I don't and Snoop didn't necessarily bring Nate Dogg because they actually kind of came yeah, yeah, them two you know, one three to two one three, and then Dre said, Fuck it, we finna bring Nate Dog and Warren G was already like his stepbrother and shit, something like that. So, yeah, yeah, and, and the East Siders really didn't have no good run, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they had that one album and shit, and that was it. I think I bought that shit. They had that East Siders movie too. I wonder if they got that bitch on YouTube. I might watch that out, man. You know, you find anything on YouTube, the East Siders. I do like, um. <laughs> I do like OG Trey D though. I, I like Trey D. I like I like how he carries it. You know what I'm saying? It's like a stand up nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't understand the game politics in Long Beach because the Rolling Twenties, which is what Snoop is, and the inside, I mean inside, insane gang. Insane. Yeah. And the insanes, they like enemies and shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it ain't too many other gangs like that. They the two biggest gangs in Long Beach and shit as far as blacks though. And they uh, be beefing. And I don't understand why they like I don't know how they put that shit together like that. You know, I know they were older and shit, but I just don't understand. I don't know, it's just I don't know. They politics is kind of weird for me for that shit. You know what I'm saying? I I, I guess it's just something that we will never understand. Like I I I I always thought that it was, you know what I'm saying, blood against Crips, but now it's you know, Crips against Crips, but it's but it seemed like it'd been like that because Monster Cody was saying, yeah, yeah, because Monster Cody was saying, right, Monster Cody was saying that his 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 main objective every day <laughs> was to get down on the A trade gangster. But see, you got you know that's a that's a whole another conversation though, bro. Like you right, know, initially, right, right. initially, yeah, it wasn't no, it it wasn't it wasn't. It wasn't crip on crip blood. I mean, because it ain't just crip on crip. It's blood on blood, pyrus on blood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> that stuff be starting from personal beefs. You know what I'm saying? You could be at yeah. you could yeah. be at a party and you know what I'm saying. Me and you get into it. I'm from Hoover. You from '60s, and then next thing you know, now the whole you know my turf beefing with your turf. You know what I'm saying? So it's history yeah, behind why they yeah. why they beefing like that. You know what I'm saying? And most mm-hmm. and most of the time yeah. they, they beefing with a neighborhood that's right there by them. Exactly. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if your neighborhood is surrounded by nothing but crip neighborhoods and shit, and it's already a territorial ass, you know, LA is territorial like that. So most of the time you beefing with and be honest with you, that's why what that I mean to, I'm not trying to indulge on gang politics and shit, but that's no nah, main nah, nah, reason nah, why we, 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 that's the main reason why I like who was is is not Crips no more, except for five dudes, but that's more, more reason why they criminals because they kept beefing with mostly Crip gangs and shit. You know what I'm saying? So and I mean that's just how yeah, it is. You I'm, just I'm, beef I'm, with I'm, your neighbor with the neighborhood opposite from you. Yeah. I mean, it's okay to talk about game bang, you know what I'm saying? Because that, that 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 that's that's part of our culture, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, just like just like Ice she said earlier, you know what I'm saying? Hey man, y'all y'all rappers coming out here to LA, just know it's fifty thousand active gang members right now. So yeah, Ice T said that walk light, walk lightly. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not putting out a threat. I'm putting out a warning. Walk lightly. Yeah, yeah, especially and then like- and then Kodak. Kodak Black throw his ass out there last night and get shot. <laughs> he got shot in the leg or something. That's crazy. Yeah, they're tripping. Kodak, I've been tripping. Kodak, Kodak, like, bro, Kodak been tripping. I don't know what's up with Kodak. Like, man, where is your security at, man? man. You worked over $10 million. I, 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 I don't that's, get it, man. It's, it's, it's really like ignorance. Like, you know, sometimes you see the ignorance of a rapper that that's broke and then get a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? They just... Yeah. It, they're still ignorant, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for real. Yeah, you know, so yeah. 
like for instance, like for you, if you go from like making twenty thousand a year to like forty to seventy five to a hundred, it's just growth. You know what I'm saying? You maturing through those levels. But when you go from fucking being broken and projects or whatever, and then you got six figures and seven figures and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? You don't think about no consequences and shit. You just fucking just you know what I'm saying? That's why they keep going to jail. That's why most of these rappers going to jail, getting out, getting in trouble, bringing 30 of their homeboys to, you know, on tour with them. And one of their homeboys is beating somebody up. Now they getting sued and shit like that. Yeah. Just, they don't be understanding all that. They just be like, fuck it. They just. And yeah. that, just like the baby. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what's up with the baby. You know, he his lawyer is his lawyer is probably eating good off the baby off all these cases that yeah. he gotta get caught up in no, yeah, you, you know man you take like you say though you take the average cat out the hood you know and he got a hood mentality you know what I'm saying so if they don't have the right people around them in a circle that's, 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 that's helping to groom them and mold them and then help them to separate the two like that goes back to what I was saying a minute ago you know, separating the individual from that rap persona, you know, mm. got to be able to separate them two individuals, man. And you can't have the same mentality yeah. that you had when you had uh, $10,000 in comparison to $10 million. Like you can't move the same way. You can't, Hell you know no. what I'm saying? Not, right. not if you want to have some longevity and, and you want to be productive. You you can't continue on, on the right. same path you was moving on. Like, man, like you could still be, you know, because being hood is is a way of thinking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, but I ain't got to move like I'm still in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, even today, bro. Man, I ain't nowhere near in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm <laughs> but I look at everything sure. from a hustle standpoint and exactly. how I move. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm I'm so far out the mm -hmm. loop and shit, and I'm glad I'm out the loop. I'm so far right. removed. I'm I'm glad I'm removed because when when you when you have kids and you have a family and, and you know it's about them now and you gotta pay these bills, you that street shit is irrelevant. Go and hang right. out with your homeboys and, and, right. and chilling, wasting time and shit. Fuck that. I'm not finna go waste time right. chilling with the homies and I got my daughter and my son at the crib. You know what I'm saying, which is way more fun and way more to me is 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 way more better than, you know, what I'm saying chilling on the block with the homeboys just wasting fucking time. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, uh, right, right. Cause uh, somebody asked me one time, uh, "Hey man, what what the gas at?" Shit, I don't know. I hey, don't Texas know. <laughs> I really don't know. I, you know, I have a, I have, a, I have assumptions, you know but back no. in the days, yeah. it's good shit. It's cool. Let me pull out this phone. I got about seven, eight cats I'm finna hit up or whatever. Let me hit yeah. up, you know what I'm saying, Chino or somebody or whoever it may be, you know what I'm saying, who got it. But now, shit, man, I'm 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 removed from that shit and and and, and probably removed. But that, you know what? And I don't listen to him, but it was on TikTok or something. So and somebody played a young boy. Somebody was doing something off a young boy lyric, and he was saying something like million dollar. Um, nigga, but still in the projects, and I was thinking no, like, I was thinking like, damn, bro, like, you are a millionaire, you still in the I projects? Look, if if you was I still was in the, that young nigga shit the other day, man, I was that nigga crazy, bro. I was thinking like, bro, <laughs> it's some grimy cats. You a millionaire, and you in the projects with them? They don't got what you got. You know what I'm saying? They probably starving. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, or whatever it may be, and you in the projects probably with all your jewelry on. Smoking big and shit, you know what I'm saying? Hop in your ride, get the go this and that, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers be jealous. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers, they trying, they hungry. You know what I'm saying? And you got these chains on and shit like right. that, and they thinking like if they rob you, you just go buy some more chains. You know what I'm saying? Like fuck it, he mm. got it. Let me just yeah. rob him because I know he got it or whatever. But they don't be thinking like that. But they and if they do get robbed, then they gonna say motherfuckers was hating. Nah, you just put yourself in, you just do yourself in a pool with sharks and shit. Everybody not eating like you. Right. So, I mean, but that's you know, just... It, it, it. And then yeah, they say, I, 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 not I, I to really, cut you off, but NBA Youngboy, he one of the nah. most streamed artists on YouTube. He said he don't even get paid off them YouTube views. 
Yeah, that's your boy. You getting millions of views put, on his videos, and he don't even get paid off that. Yeah, he tripping. I put his shit in. I put on. I put. I started listening to his shit the other day just to see what he talking about, man. I listened to two songs. I'm like, I'm gonna got to cut this shit out. This nigga is crazy, man. I did, I, I <laughs> you know just, what I mean? But but he 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 a talented artist. You know what I'm saying? I, I like the way he put his his lines together and stuff and do his ad lib. He's good at it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But bro, all this killing shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Why this shit crazy, man? Like, uh, yeah, we 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 want to elevate so bad, right? We want to elevate. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and most and some of us are. You know what I'm saying? But we. We we out here killing each other, and then and and then we got the you know the uh, the other races against us. You know what I'm saying? A, a, a brother in Mississippi just got his motherfucking head decapitated, bro. This week, we ain't hear we ain't hear nothing about it though. I see y'all the video later on. Got his head decapitated, bro. You know what I'm saying? So you know we 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 dealing with against each other, and then we got to deal with other other shit too. So you Ooh. know, do y'all um, do y'all think that, the music? That, because we, I used to hear it when we was younger, as far as like the music influence in the youth. Y'all think the music is influencing the youth now that y'all are older now? Oh yeah, very, very, very much so. Uh, um, it 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 really did influence us, you know what I'm saying? But we we it was different from when we was coming up, man. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. Uh, it was a lot of a lot of fist fighting going on when, when we was coming up. It, it was guns blazing too, but now it ain't no more fists. It, it's just guns blazing. We don't throw hands no more. It's just guns blazing, you know. And man, all all this drill rap shit, man, this shit is crazy, bro. Like this shit, this drill rap shit from Chicago has taken the has taken the world by storm, bro. Everybody want to kill each other. Yeah, yeah. You Nobody, you I think you. you Go ahead, bro. Go ahead, King. Nah, go ahead, bro. Finish what you're saying. Nah, you come in the game and you ain't got no ops. You ain't nobody if you ain't if you ain't got no enemy. What what your ops at? Yeah, that can't. I mean, who you who you who you smoking on? Who you smoking on? To, you know what to, I'm saying? To me, to be honest with you, the the quicker the this is my view for the rap game. Okay, so you know what I'm saying you can blow up super fast, and if you start rapping about maybe this dope game and selling bricks and killing motherfuckers. But everybody's doing that. Yeah. So if you can get yeah. lucky and you can sign with maybe like Yo Gotti or whoever it is and blow up quick and have all the chains and shit or whatever. But if you want to be different like that little cat from Beaumont or whatever, um, the one who um, kind of blowing up and shit. With Kanye and Drake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Johnny. Johnny. Johnny Coco or something. John, Johnny Coco. Uh, I like him. Yeah, yeah the dude, nice. Yeah, and see, when you rap different like that, and you speak on different things, and you're not talking about killing all that, you build up a fan base, but you build it up slowly. But you kind of, you, I mean, but you still get there and shit, and you kind of organic. You're not like mm -hmm. all these other artists, so you get to you get to stay in the game longer because you're different. You're not like these other artists that's talking about rapping and killing because most of them is doing that. So you separating yourself from rapping about different shit and having different substance and that's gonna make your career you know what i'm saying put longevity to your career kind of like j cole and shit like that and artists like that and you know what i'm saying yeah but you know if you want that quick fame and you want the chains and you know what i'm saying the cars if that's possible if it's not no rental then you rap about guns and coke and all that type of shit but i was listening to man i was talking i was talking to myself one day getting off work in the morning and it was about rappers and I was thinking like what rapper in your hood sold bricks and did all this shit and they said I'm finna rap and blew up <laughs> I don't know anybody that was in our hood from the north end or whatever even the south end it, in my period but to me the north end in southeast Texas is one of the most dangerous hoods growing up you know what I'm saying? If you want to compare it to everything in Southeast Texas or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I was, I was just thinking like, okay, it wasn't nobody thinking about rapping that's selling bricks. How can you sell bricks and doing all this and shooting and doing all this at the same time and be like, okay, let me go to the studio and start rapping. I'm not finna sell bricks no more. I'm finna start rapping because you're not finna make mm -hmm. money that quick off the rap game. So you gotta have some patience and shit. 
So I was just thinking like all these artists that be talking about they selling bricks and did that and did this. What made you start rapping? What made you say, let me get in the studio and start rapping? Because generally a, a motherfucker that's selling bricks and doing all this, they not finna be doing no shit like that. They not they not worried about rapping and doing like that. Imagine Big Meech. Imagine Big Meech saying, you know what, I'm finna be a rapper. I'm finna rap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just don't see a lot of artists that talk about selling bricks say, you know what? I'm finna start rapping. You know, fuck this shit. Now yeah, maybe yeah. I mean yo Gotti talk about selling bricks and shit like that. But I'm not saying he necessarily sold bricks and shit, but maybe he's maybe he sold like a some ounces or you know, cause motherfuckers like to, you know, blow their shit up bigger than what <laughs> And shit, you know what I'm saying? Motherfucker ain't finna rap about yeah. I was selling ounces and all that type of shit, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. You know, just say, I'm sure. It. I'm sure, man. It was probably it's probably some cats, you know, who who who, you know, played both hands. You know what I'm saying? Was was, was juggling them things and then might hit the studio and or or so? mayor. You think yeah, so? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I'm sure it's you know what I'm saying because because you gotta look at it, bro. Like hustling. It, 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 it's a part of that culture. I mean, most of the people that are rappers, they they come from they come from the hood. You know what I'm saying? Most people, and so coming from that particular environment, it's only natural that you was involved in that. So so whether or not they were actually moving bricks, they probably had a hand in in some type of hustling. You know what I'm saying? So whether they had bricks or not, you know who? Hey, who knows? But they they didn't probably dibbled and dabbled in that lifestyle most definitely, you know. And that go back to what Ken was saying, like, or uh, or maybe you asked the question: Does the music influence people? And to a degree, it, we can't say that the music doesn't. You know, I kind of see it from both perspectives because music, you know, music got a vibration to it, bro. You hear you hear a certain type of a beat come on, and it do something to you. It make you feel a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You hear a hard track come on, you like, man, that track up, mm-hmm. man. You know what I'm saying? Just the beat by itself before they the rapper or, or the or the singer even say something on the track. You know, it's a certain vibe, it's a vibration to it. It do something to you, you know. Or or, or you riding and you listening to some old Isley Brothers or something. You know what I'm saying? Like right, right. it it it, it kind of is. You know they call that thinking music. Or we say, man, put that highway music on, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like music gives you a certain vibe. It, it kind of sets the vibe for you. I remember back in the days, bro. Like when that when that uh that damn Master P that body body first came out. Bro, when yeah. they played that song back in the day, we'll guarantee you it was gonna be a fight in the club. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That body body was hard. Yeah, man. yeah, you know. So boy, the, boy, the, the music to a degree. Club, what you say? <laughs> boys in that homeless club get whooped. Somebody said get smashed on. Oh <laughs> yeah, man, up in that Mercedes somewhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know. But you know, man, it, it it the music has a certain vibration to it, man, that, that does something to you. You know what I'm saying? So to a degree, yeah, man, you know, the music does influence you. You know, but at the same time, yeah. you gotta look at I look at it from this perspective, bro. It's like people are making certain type of music. Like people rap about the rappers rap about what they see. You know what I'm saying? It's not that art imitates life, it's life imitates art. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or art imi- excuse me. Art imitates life, as they say. You know what I'm saying? So these artists, they just right. putting, they just they just speaking on what they've saw, you know, what they what they've done or what right. they've heard. You know, whether they actually lived it, saw it firsthand, or heard it secondhand through somebody who saw it firsthand from the environment that they grew up in. So, you know, when when you talk about the music, cats just rapping what they see. You know they rapping what 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 they see every day around them. You know what I mean. So right, right. I think if you change the mindset and the way of thinking of the people who are actually making the music, that that's that's where it is. I don't so to a degree. I don't know if it's that the music influences people. You know what I mean, or if it's the influences uh, on the people that's making the music that's 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 more vital. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I think music is. Right. I think music has definitely dumbed down the youth 
Because back in the days, you used to have to have talent to rap. Everybody didn't rap. You know what I'm saying? It, it used to be the few that rapped. Now, anybody and everybody can rap. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to have talent. Uh, you don't have to write yeah. stuff down. You just need a nice little beat and a catchy hook. And then you you rap and shit. That's pretty much what it is now. And I think the lyrics that I be hearing on the radio and people singing and and I'm thinking like it's really dumbed down. It's like it's nothing special, man. And I, I don't know, man. I, I think the music is dumbing people down. I think the school system is dumbing kids down and stuff. And yeah, you know, you know and that's one reason what makes me go harder um, as far as trying to accumulate more wealth. Is to put my daughter in and my son in a better position because I know their generation is gonna be tough, man. Because jobs is gonna be scarce because people is, mm. people are not trying to go to college to be this or become a RN or a nurse practitioner or wherever it may be or whatever. Mm. And and shit's just going up. She's getting crazy. So you know what I'm saying. As far as the youth, man, it's just I don't, it's just life is going to be really tough you know the right as the years go by life is going to get tough man and it's going to be a lot of and people what, that's going to be in poverty right and, yeah and, music uh, today bro is definitely watered down it and it's it's everybody sound the same to me i really don't even listen to a number of these cats out here it, it it's all the same they got the same cadence they 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 rap about the same thing it's no originality, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But you could look at look right. at the cultural shift, though. If you if you look at the cultural shift, you can see the uh, you can see how music transformed over the years. Because you know it was a point in time in in music where where people were more so. At one time, hip hop was all about it was it was like braggadocio. You know, people was bragging about how cold they were on the mic. You know what I mean. Mm. Or, or people were talking about how cold they DJ was, you know. Then you know you look at the '80s, yeah. and you had that kind of a conscious, conscious era in hip hop, where where people were talking about, you know, you saw you saw the dressing style. Yeah, people like X Clan, uh, Diggable Planets. You had the Poe Righteous Teachers, you know, and they were dropping mm. the science on them. You know, you had a lot of the five percent mathematics was incorporated into the music at that time. You know, then then the nineties came. You had you had the birth of the of the gangster rapper, you know? And everybody everybody was on some gang time. You know, everybody was on some shoot 'em up bang bang. You know what I'm saying? Right, then then, right, then you right. go to the you go to the two thousands and it was all about the bling bling. It's all about how much money you had, how much you know, what your jury game was like. You know what I'm saying? What what kind of whips you driving, you know? Then, then the music transitioned over to it, it was feel good. Everybody was partying and having fun. You know, they got dances with their raps now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, right, right. Then, then, then yeah, from yeah. there, we went to a, a, a era of drug induced raps. You know, everybody talking about Molly's and popping pills, and you know, well, you know, we from yeah, Texas, man. bro. So you know, drinking served been a part of the culture here, but. You know, they, it started going global. You know, everybody was talking about drinking, drink and popping pills, and you know what I'm saying. And and right. and now we kind of at a point in rap where, man, I really don't know what the identity of rap is right now today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like it's just, right. I don't know. It, it's kind of like uh, you got a bunch of young, young cats, young man, cats. and salute to them. You know, for coming you know, up and, 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 and doing something. Putting, putting some, some money, money in their pocket. pocket. I can't knock that. But as far as the musical content, I me personally, I ain't a fan. I don't listen to none of these new wave cats, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. Right. It, it may be two or three you know, cats I listen to, but but the rest of them, I, yeah. I just can't get with it. Man, I had to put right. on my charger, man. So, so uh, what, what Floyd was saying, do, you know, do we think music uh, influence uh, the minds today, you know, um, just like Flo was talking about uh, ESTG, uh, 
And then I, I told y'all about Navy Navy Wavy Pooh last last month. That I didn't know. I didn't, I I didn't know until he got killed dude. in Miami. I, I I didn't either until he got killed. So um, when he turned when when he turned seventeen, uh, the University of Florida uh, 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 Miami Hurricanes wanted him to come play for him. He turned that he turned that down. He wanted to be a gangster rapper. Oh, um, uh, Navy Wavy Pooh. His name was Navy. The, the dude that got killed. Navy Wavy Pooh. Navy, yeah. Okay. And I, and I, I never heard, heard of him. When he got me, me neither. I just heard about him when he got killed. When, you know, when I shared shared that video to y'all. You but, know, but, you but, know, ES but they, team. Um, yeah, played college he, football. He's in. The, yeah, he, yeah. He tried out for the Texas. So, yeah. So, so I'm saying though, I'm saying though, Floyd, like, okay, you you got all these options, you know what I'm saying? But but you you choose to want to go this route. Hey, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's good to make your money. You know what I'm saying? Because I, he, he, who don't, who don't, who don't like the, who don't like the rap? You know what I'm saying? In in, in our community, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but at the same time, at the same time, if you got this over here, but you choose this over here, and then you get killed trying to be against the rapper, it, it don't even, it don't even make no sense. Just stay in your lane, you know. It, it, I, I feel like it's a lot of young, young black men, young black men. That's forcing themselves into the streets. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, I and, and and I say it like this, even even from our era. Hey man, look, if you wasn't if you wasn't selling no dope at 13, 14, Bowie Bo- Middle School, Austin Middle School, if you wasn't doing none of that, don't wait till you're 21 years old or something. <laughs> because 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 then you're way behind. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what's going on, and then it it it, it just become a problem for you. You know what I'm saying? So if if you just start in high school and, and, and all that stuff, like 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 I know most cats and, and, and we both all three know cats that w- was in school doing that, you know what I'm saying? But then you got cats that wanna wait till they're thirty years old to start game banging and all this crap, you know. We are supposed to be out here leading the young men, but our but 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 dudes our age wanna be doing the same thing these youngsters do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, as far as uh, as that man, I think it's just I, I I think to me I think it's cats out there that's just not being accountable to themselves as far as raising their kids, man. As far as the if you have if you're sixteen year old, fifteen year old, whatever it may, teenage son out there, just thugging and and doing whatever mm-hmm. the hell he want, man. You not I mean. You just keeping the cycle going. You're not trying to break that cycle mm-hmm. because, to be honest with you, right? You're supposed to put your kids in a better position from when you started. You know what I'm saying? As far as how that right, goes, right, right, right. But right. you know what I'm saying? I was, I know a cat that is not trying to leave a particular project in the North End. He said he ain't trying. Mm-hmm. He said he ain't going nowhere. And, and, mm-hmm. and with that type of mentality, if he's not trying to go nowhere, okay, so you putting your you putting your kids in the same situation, the same environment. I'm not trying to say that we need to move out of our, 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 our environment environment and go into these certain neighborhoods and all that type of shit. But when you uh to me, when you when you want more for yourself, you eventually go buy you some land or move into a certain kind of neighborhood that kind of fits the lifestyle that you want to live and shit like that. So, and right. for instance, let's just say I had the mentality like, fuck it, I'm finna live in Pima Village forever. If I have that type of mentality, I'm not finna, I'm, I'm the mindset, you're not finna be trying to make a high five or six figures. You're not gonna make right. five, a high five or six figures living in the projects. You, you, you not, or whatever, you right. not. So that means to tell me that you're not finna try and go out as hard as you can as far as to, you know what I'm saying, grinding or working and trying to provide right. for your kids like that. So they just yeah. growing up in the system and they're going through the cycle, they're going through the environment that you went through and it's the same fucking mm-hmm. shit. And those type of people right. be knocking people like yourself, like Laban, who's providing for their kids and able to do this for their kids and then Oh, they spalled or whatever. Or or those person, right. they kids are looking at your kids like, uh, they spalled. Uh, they mm-hmm. they they got everything. They 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 some spalled ass motherfuckers and all soft and shit like that. 
But naturally, you grew mm-hmm. up the same way their parents did, but you just fucking want to do something for yourself, which now they kids benefited from. And that's just how it is now. Right. Right. But 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 if you mm-hmm. able to, why why wouldn't you spoil your children though? You know what I'm saying? Like right. and what I mean by that is, but why not give your children the best or whatever it is you got to offer? You know what I'm saying? If mm-hmm. if you a fifty thousand dollar a year type dude. Or a hundred thousand dollar or a million dollar, you know what I'm saying? But to the best of your ability, why not spoil your children to the best of your ability? You know what I'm saying? Like I think I think right. in our community, bro, we have a mindset and mentality and way of thinking that, oh man, we you know what well, they got to, you know, a struggle mentality, basically. Like mm-hmm. if I'm able to provide my child with different things that I myself didn't have as a child or or that uh, a number of children around him may not have the opportunity to have. Why wouldn't I do it if I if I have the the the, the means to? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like just just or oh, well, they need to learn to pre- well you still teach them the value of things. It don't mean that I can't go out and buy them a pair of hundred dollar shoes if I got the means to do that. You know what I'm saying? But I teach him the value of things. I teach you still instill a work ethic in them and morals, values and principles. But I think I think sometimes bro right. <laughs> Because because a lot of times how we came up, our parents and how they were brought up, you know, they had to struggle in a lot of instances and a number of us and our community still struggle coming up. Yeah, so, we don't have to struggle no more. That's the thing. We don't have to struggle yeah, no more. Right. Kids, exactly. Don't have to, you're okay. Your parents struggle. Your great grandma struggle. Your great great grandmother struggle. OK, break that system. You don't have to. Yeah, struggle. Your there you go. Don't have to struggle, man. Like. I don't know why motherfuckers think that they like struggling is like it's like the norm. Like that's cool. That ain't cool. (laughs) That ain't cool, bro. It ain't cool to struggle. (laughs) It's like it it ain't gangster to struggle. You know, like Mm -hmm. fuck that. I don't want my daughter. I don't want my kids to struggle. I don't want them. I took that lifestyle or whatever. And to be honest with you, (laughs) I really didn't struggle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My dad, my my dad, my mom, it's five of us. We didn't struggle like that. Now, yeah. I've seen the growth that my parents took as far as, you know what I'm saying, the houses we stayed in to eventually the house that they end up buying, you know, like living yeah. on Pope Street. And then that house got torn down and, you know, renting a house in the West End and then eventually them buying a house. I've seen the levels that they took to get to where they was, but mm-hmm. we wasn't struggling to shit where we go eat or you right, know, right, you right. know what I'm saying my dad was able to oh y'all want some J's okay he didn't want to do it but he was able to get us J's and all that type of shit so mm-hmm. he he you know shout out to my dad for actually kind of breaking the cycle to letting us know like mm-hmm. you know you don't have to struggle and to be honest mm-hmm. with you you know what I'm saying being a kid uh you know, when your parents set the bar, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, like, uh, it's kind of hard to say, but you don't want to, like, you know, live your life. You don't want to, like, you know, you want to reach that bar and go right, higher. Right. So you, you don't want to lower the standards. Yeah, you don't want to lower the standards because they gave you this opportunity and, you know what I'm saying, to, to, right. to do something and shit. So, you know, you kind of put it on yourself right. to be like, okay, you know, they... They held it down. They got their own house. They, you know, we did this, we did that. We struggled. They fed, he fed five of us and all that shit like that. So right. it's up to me to raise that boy higher to provide for my daughter and son to, you know what I'm saying, and set that bar for them. So when they get to that age, you know what I'm saying, I can leave them with something or like principles installed in them to where they can fucking just jump over the bar. I said way higher. Yeah, shit like that. and that's right. that's breaking the cycle and shit like that. So, you know what I'm saying? Like back in the days, like when Laban and them used to come over to the hood and I used to drop them off and shit. I or sometimes we'll just ride through the West End and just see these houses. And I think to myself, why I can't live like them? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you know, like they living in these houses. Shit, I could live in these houses too. Like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So, right, it's just right. a mindset. Some people don't. Some people don't think like that. They don't think big. They just all they think is just the hood and the mentality and struggling, and they cool with that. Turning up every weekend or something or whatever, and they fine with that. 
You know what I'm saying? But right. I think we, I think as far as the people, we need to, we need to upgrade ourselves to a, a higher standard. Cause right now, you know what I'm saying? The Hispanics is down there lapping us and shit as far as, you know what I'm saying? Man. Shit getting done in America. And they just don't have the political power yet. But as far as right. like, you know, uh, networking together, businesses and all that type of shit, they, they really have a more of cohesiveness, you know what I'm saying, togetherness than, you know, right, people, right. So, oh, yeah, well, absolutely. It, it, it really don't take much to support one another, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like I told, it's like I told you, man, like, it, our, our people, man, you know, if, if we had the cohesiveness, you know what I'm saying, we, we, we'll, we'll be way more farther than where we're at right now. And you know, I, I don't want to get out that subject that, that, that you was on, uh, Floyd, with the, with the parents. You know, I mean, I mean, how often do you get a conversation like this with three black men that grew that grew up with their fathers in the house? You know what I'm saying? My parents divorced at 15, but I still grew up with my dad. Mm-hmm. I still grew up with him. You know, yeah. and shit, man, this, you know, you know what I'm saying? To so grow up with our fathers, you know, even though my mom and dad divorced at, at 96, you know what I'm saying? If he wasn't there. My life would be in a total direction right now, and I'm 40 years old. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. I'm, I'm gonna just be honest. I'm gonna just I'm, I'm gonna just be honest. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't even imagine. Uh, yeah, uh, the lifestyle I had without my old man because he put me in sports. He uh, they put us in sports. Right. They he provided. He was like the sole provider. So you know what I'm saying? We probably right. I'll probably be a project baby or something like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even gonna lie right. to you. Who knows? Who knows what my right. mom would have did? You know what I'm saying? I'm not finna knock my mom. She she could have said, fuck it, my back against the wall. Let me go do something great for my kids or something. Who knows? But I'm just saying, right. like, when you have that father um, in your life, you know what I'm saying? It, it does kind of change the mindset of a kid who don't have no authority figure or whatever. Because when you get right. a certain age, it's only something certain that your mom go do. You turn 15, 16-year-old teenage boy, man, you know what I'm saying? Your mom can only really do so much. She can only hope that you go the right route and shit. So yeah, you start smelling yeah. yourself as the as the old folks say, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. First, 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 <laughs> you know, I look back now. I was telling somebody the other day. You know, coming up, man. I mean, I used to bump heads with my pops all the time. You know what I'm saying? One reason why I see my grandma. Yeah, me too. Me too. And and too. and looking back now, you know what I mean? I can appreciate. The different things that he told me, um, and, and what he showed me more so, you know, seeing like you were saying, Floyd, you know, seeing my pops, my pops, man, I see him get off one job and go straight to work to another job. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And seeing those things, it in, it instills uh, a certain work ethic in you. You know what I mean? Because I'm the same way now. Like, bro, I, you know, I go all out for my family. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I, that's how that's what I saw coming up, you know what I'm saying, and that was my example of what a man supposed to do. I think that's you know, why so. we got this group, why we got that group chat, and we can all kind of relate, you know what I'm saying, as right. far as you know, what I'm saying having like you know father figures and shit, raising our kids, um, right. you know what I'm saying, and just you know trying to do what we can as a, on a, a positive side because we grew up in a negative neighborhood, and, and it don't to me. To me, it don't matter where you grew up. But I, I think I don't think we could. Use, I, I'm cer- maybe certain some some circumstances in certain neighborhoods and shit. It depends on how that person grew up. Now, if he grew up without no mom and no dad, and he, he bouncing from aunt to uncle and shit in the, right. you know, the neighborhood. And, mm-hmm. You know, that's different. But you know, what I'm saying to in Beaumont to me, you know, what I'm saying. It don't matter if you grew up in Pima Village or Magnolia or CDS or the South End or whatever. I think you still got the opportunity to still be great and still do whatever the fuck you want because shit, everybody from my neighborhoods was, was wasn't out thugging. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You, had some, yeah. you had some cats from the North End and shit that just went to school and did their work and went home and chilled and did what they had to do. They didn't they didn't go out there thugging and shit like that. This I mean we did, <laughs> but I'm just saying we didn't have to do that. But I'm just saying you have the option, you know what I'm saying, to do this or to to do that. And I think that the excuses now 
it, I don't think you can make that excuse and say motherfuckers is holding it against you or the government yeah. is trying to hold you back. Yeah. You know nah, bro. I think you know what I'm saying. If you want to, whatever you want to do and shit, you can you could do it. Shit, if you want to drive trucks and then own a fucking trucking company, you could do that. If you want to fucking go to school and shit, you got the Texas Workforce Center. Right. They fucking help you out with programs and shit to pay for your school. So I think right. a lot of people we do it. I would do it's what you choose, bro. Generation is, is doing some big things. Yeah, it's no excuse. It's it man, it's listen, bro. All the challenges, yeah, there's gonna be challenges, you know what I'm saying? Because if it was that simple, if it was that easy, then everybody in life would be doing it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody would be right. I think somebody. I think, I think somebody was calling. I think somebody calling late. Hello? You hear me, Ken? Yeah. Yeah. I think I think somebody was calling Laban or something or whatever. But yeah, like he said, man, if it was easy, you know what I'm saying, everybody be doing it and stuff like that. And that's what that's what deter a lot of people. Right. Right. I'm back. <laughs> yeah. yeah Blink that for a sec. But yeah, now, nah, man. Um. Uh, I was saying, man, if, if it was simple, right, everybody would be rich. Everybody would be living a successful life, man, big house, nice cars, the whole nine yards, man. But but that ain't reality. You know what I'm saying? So there's going to be challenges. Everybody got some type of challenge. Your challenge might be more difficult than mine. You know what I mean? My my route might be a little easier, but at the end of the day, every everybody has their own choices, you know? Mm-hmm. So you might come up in a negative environment, but you have a choice whether to move in a negative manner, continue doing what you see around you, or you have the choice to say, man, I'm going to do something different. You know, I'm going to look for a, a different outcome, yep. you know? So we can't use that as an excuse and say that, man, well, you know, I grew up this way, that way. Yeah, you did, you know what I mean? But ultimately, you made the decision to do what you did. You see what I'm saying? You made the decision right. on how you move. And 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 right. as far as you know, being a black man in this in this nation and in this country, like, yeah, you automatically got challenges on you. But bro, it's 2022. Like, it's really? so many opportunities, and so you got people who get rich off of YouTube, bro, sitting in a living room. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, look, look what we doing right now. Bro, I'm sitting in my bed. <laughs> yeah. You sitting in your living room, Floyd. You know what I mean? Like, there's so many different ways to get money nowadays. It's really no excuse to say, well, man, I had to do this, right? Or this is the only route I had, right? And, and yeah, there's an exception to every rule. But what I'm saying, we're talking about for the most part, right? There's a, there's a lot of opportunities out there. I mean, you just have to make the conscious decision to choose what it is you, you want you want out of life and how you want to move, you know? Yeah, exactly, man. Everything you said, yeah, yeah. that's fucked. And I think like a, I yeah. think with the youth now, you might have a kid. I was thinking like you might have like a kid that said, "Man, you know what? I want to be a dentist." But he's scared to tell it, say that around his homeboys because his homeboys go laugh at him and be like, "You want to be a dentist? You want to fuck with teeth? You want to clean teeth for a living?" And they and he might be scared that they go joke and laugh at him and pick with him because he want to be a dentist. But in actuality. We don't have too many black dentists out there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then the lifestyle that right. this kid can live, you know what I'm saying? Could set his other kids, set his children up, you know what I'm saying? For a, a better future and stuff like that. But just, I mean, it's just not a lot of opportunities because a lot of kids are fearful of the opinion of others because you know what I'm saying? They they just scared. It, it, one of my homegirls, she hit me. And she was telling me that she want to do candles, but she's scared. She's scared to do it because she's scared of uh, what people might say about it if they don't like it or whatever. And I told her, I was like, shit, you can't be scared of people's opinions. They're not paying your bills and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. can't be scared about that. And I, and I told her, like, right. you know what I'm saying? With Kevin Hart, people be saying Kevin Hart not funny because it's the most gross. gross he grosses the most money, you know what I'm saying, as far as a comedian. 
You think he can about somebody yeah. that he ain't never met saying he's trash? Yeah, yeah. He got a lot funny though, but go ahead. Yeah, he got a bunch of other people that support him so much. He not you don't focus on that negativity shit, man. Right, 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 right. You, know saying, man, right, you, can't, right, focus, right. you can't focus on that shit like that. That's now that's real mean. though, man. A, a lot of times I always tell I always say, man, that a, a lot of times what holds people back from, from change or, or doing something different is, is the fear of being accepted. Mm-hmm. You know, how how other people mm-hmm. gonna receive them. Or, or, or how how people going to act, you know, if you decide, like, I use myself, for example, bro. You know, Floyd, I mean, you know, when Kendrick, y'all, y'all know my background, y'all know my history. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Man, when I when I came home after my little old stretch, bro, I was like, man, I, I don't care about what, what nobody say, nobody think about how I move, if they think I'm, yeah, I'm square. I'm a complete square now. I, now I don't do none of that, man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, mm-hmm. I ain't trying to kick it. Mm-hmm. And I ain't trying to smoke nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I, I, I yeah. didn't care, but it's it's a lot of people who who because of the fear of, of being mm-hmm. accepted, you know, they'll 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 hinder their own growth because of wanting to, wanting to fit in with others. You know? I told my I told my wife the other, I told my wife today. I think it was today, earlier today. Yeah, I think it was today, about the day that when you came to the crib before you was going and before you was going to turn yourself in, I think. Yeah. And I, I didn't tell her the whole story who was at the house or whatever, but I told her like <laughs> yeah, boy Lalo came through when he was finna go turn himself in and stuff like that. And um and when when you got out and shit, a lot of people were still in the same spot, you know what I'm saying? For Man shit, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, For real. I mean, it's all about a mindset, but what, man. But what happened, Laban? Like, like, the, did you get caught? To, did you get caught with someone, or you just had to turn yourself in because you was wanted? I mean, I mean, I, I had, I was out on the bond. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I had to go turn myself in. <clears throat> once I got sentenced, I yeah. had, I had, because I had a monitor on. So once I got sentenced, yeah, you know what I mean. I pretty much had to. Um, Oh, no, I'm, I'm my bad. I hadn't got sentenced yet, but I knew my um my court date was coming up. That's what it was. So basically, I knew when my court date came up, they was gonna lock me up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that was already. There wasn't no ifs ands or buts about that. I know I was finna go for the long ride. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, yeah. but um, like how, like, but, like how did you feel though? Like 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 did you have a lot of and anxiety or what? Or, or you were just ready to go do what you had to do? Nah, I was ready to go, bro. I mean, because I had to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I already knew what yeah. I was up against. It, it wasn't no probation coming, nothing like that. I was, going, I was going to the penitentiary. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, one thing about them feds, bro, they ain't, they, they don't play with you. You know you what I mean? You glad it was the feds and not state? I mean, prison is prison, bro. That stuff they talk about the feds, bro. To be honest with you, the feds might be a little more a little more treacherous than the state. You know what I mean? Because in the feds, cats, them boys, man. they play with. I killed them in the feds in Beaumont. Too. That's what I'm saying. The boy play with them knives in the feds, bro. In the state, they they fight, and yeah, you'll get stabbed up. But in the in the feds, bro, they putting that knife in you. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially, especially like the essays. You know, they gonna put that knife in you, bro. Two essays died. Yeah, yeah, they gonna put that knife in you. They ain't trying to fight, bro. They gonna put that knife in you. But mm-hmm. the thing, the thing is this, man. Like I look at, I look at myself, right? Uh, I just use me for example. Mm-hmm. You know, after after ten years, uh, losing my freedom, you know, I made a, I made a decision. Then I'm like, bro, this ain't for me. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Sitting in the penitentiary mm-hmm. ain't for me. You know. So when I came home, I had a different mentality. I'm like, I got to do something different with myself. And like you said, Floyd, I came home, bro, after 10 years, and a lot of cats I knew, you know, they were still doing the same thing, you know, still in the same mm-hmm. place, you know. I, I came home with, with, with nothing but the clothes on my back, you know, and, and whatever uh, somebody decided to give me when I came home, you know what I mean? And a little, little bit of change I had accumulated over the years, but, <clears throat> bro, now I, I got a house, I several cars, you know what I'm saying? Like, Mm-hmm. I'm a working man and um 
I ain't I ain't capping or bragging, but I mean I I do fairly well for myself, man. I'm able to provide for my yeah. wife, my children, you know. Yeah. But if, if, if yeah, I could have easily took the other path. You know what I mean? I could easily came home right. and been like, well, you know, man, I wanna I want the homeless to accept me. But bro, I'm man, I'm not worried about anybody accepting me. See, when you get to the point, bro, where you comfortable with yourself, you you get to the point where you don't care what nobody think about you, what anybody says about you, man, it's a peace that can't nothing bring to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like where you live life according to your standard and 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 your expectations and not anyone else's. Man, it is a it's a it's a weight lifted off your shoulders because what I what I look back at and realize like I had kind of started living up to a certain persona and image. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hold like, on, this was this was in the hood or this was uh, like, yeah 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 this yeah yeah this was in the hood. You know what I mean? Cause Floyd, you know, for I love, bro, it, it got really wild. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> For the end of the, you know, for before I took that ride, you know, we were doing, Y'all you know, were gang in it too. Yeah, I was in, I was in some treacherous things, man. I ain't gonna go into it on here, you know. We can, <laughs> we can talk offline about that. <laughs> talk off record on that, man. <laughs> so, you know, this, we, not, this not Vlad TV, man. Yeah, bro. You know, we ain't going into all that, man. But let's just say, man, it it could have been a lot worse. It could have went a lot bad. Uh. uh you know, it could have went a lot worse than it did, man. Some of the things that were jumping off and going down. Mm-hmm. But I noticed I had gotten to a certain mentality and uh, I really kind of kind of got away from my real self. You know what I'm saying? I started living up in my mind. I was living up to a certain persona, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And kind of the expectations of, of, of people around me and in my circle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but like I say, when you get to a point, bro, where where you just living your life according to how you live life and, and you're not trying to please nobody. You know, you, you're not trying to impress anybody. You just doing you, mm-hmm. bro. It's a, it's a, it's a peace of mind that, that, that you can't get from nowhere else. Yeah, man. When you, some, somebody, I don't know who it was, man. I get inbox all the time, but somebody was saying how they, they was like, man, I just love your posts. And I'm like, man, to be honest with you, I check myself. Like, when I be getting off of work and I get off <laughs> of work, I be talking to myself and I be checking yeah. myself. I be like, yeah. I was like, man, you supposed to did this. Like, you supposed to did this the other day. Man, the mother, I was like, you know these motherfuckers don't want you to win. You know they, <laughs> don't, they ain't happy about you. I be just telling myself, like, like when Ray Lewis give a speech, I just be telling that shit in my head. Like, bro, they don't want to see you win like this. They don't want to see you make these positive posts. They say you lame. They say this and that and all that type of shit. And I tell that person, I'm like, really? I'm just when I post it, I just it's be me checking myself. So I just post yeah. the shit. You well, know what I'm saying? Real or whatever. That's just what it is, man. I just yeah. I be just driving home and shit, and I be like, yo, man, you supposed to do this, or you supposed to do that, or you can't post that. He's like, you know, you know, these motherfuckers finna bite off of you. You know, it'd be just shit like that or whatever. And I just be telling myself and I just be posting this shit or whatever. So yeah. not to change it, but my, when I do morning shows, my morning shows is just going to be shit just like that. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be some positive shit. Morning you know motivation. It's going to be yeah. morning motivation with cussing yeah. and all kind of shit. They don't give a fuck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's just gonna yeah. be hard because some people understand that type of language and shit. Yeah, 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 for real, for real. I don't know yeah. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> no five step program. You know what I'm saying? Like wake up, meditate, read a book. I'm not. I don't know that shit like that, man. I just know that you know what I'm saying. You just gotta have discipline. You gotta be consistent about the shit, and you gotta whatever your goals is. You gotta treat that shit like eating, just like you gotta eat. You know what I'm saying? It's like you hungry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you go find a way to eat if you don't have nothing in the fridge. I'm not saying do no illegal shit, but you might go out there and fucking ask for some money or something like that. But you go find a way to eat, and that's how you gotta right. treat the shit you want to do in life. Yeah. Your goals, you gotta you gotta treat that shit like you want to eat. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. For real, especially man. Especially yeah. at our, especially at our age, you know what I'm saying? We we fought we fought in up, you know what I'm saying? We yeah. we, we middle aged men, so man, you gotta move with a simple. Man, urgency. we don't got time to be fucking saying, 
hey, 2023 nah. is going to be my year. Uh, 2024, man, I'm not trying to wait to, to December to say that a whole year is going to be mine. I'm finna start right now, man. Motherfuckers be waiting to December the 31st to be like, man, uh, 2023, I ain't taking no shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, 40, yeah. my 40s now, I I can't be waiting for a year to do this and that. I got to do everything now because if I start yeah. now, it might take us several years to get to where I got to go. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I can't yeah. wait until fucking 2023 to fucking start and shit like that. And I be seeing people make posts all the time. Uh, this is going to be my year. Okay. W- check your history and see what you said last year that same time. You probably said the same shit last year, the past three, four years. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Oh, whatever. So, man, yeah. man. For real, though. If you want it, you'll go get it, bro. You know what I'm saying? And it's a lot of people that just be saying that shit and don't be putting no action into it. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 you know, I shit, and when I say shit like that, I'll, it it be really checking me too, cause it's some shit like that that I need to fucking get on, and I be procrastinating. So that's what it's gonna be. It's gonna be some morning motivational shit, maybe like thirty minutes or something like that. We might do some birthday shout outs. Might have people call in if they want to call in and, and talk about something, but it's not gonna be that long. But it's gonna be maybe like two, three days a week or something like that or whatever. I can't do that shit. You know what I'm saying? Most, morning, but... most people need that. Most people need that push, man. You know what I'm saying? So maybe with them listening to your podcast or, 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 or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Maybe that can help them get up on Facebook. Or you know what I mean? Just, yeah, just, just we all have that one person that, anything. you know, kick us in the ass to get us started and shit. My little Asian homeboy kicked me in my ass and, and got me into school because I procrastinated for a whole year. You know what I'm saying? I filled out all kind of paperwork and shit and said, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? I said, I ain't finna go. I was supposed to went up there to the school and shit. I didn't even go. He got upset. Mm-hmm. So when it came around again, he he's like, bro, I'll drive you up there, man. He said, I'll drive you up there. You ain't trying to be working here forever, huh? I said, no. He said, well, shit, man, I'll drive Ooh. you up there. And I said, nah, I'll drive up there and shit. And shit, he fucking, he, he, shit, he helped me get back into school, man, and, and kind of Got yeah. to where I am right now as far as like on a financial standpoint and shit or whatever. And so, right. you know, you all you you got that certain person or whatever and shit that that'll, you know what I'm saying, motivate you to do something and shit. And if you're not doing it, they'll kick in your ass and make sure you straight and shit like that. So, yeah, yeah. We all hey, lady. Hey, hey, lady. Yo. What what motivated you? You know what I'm saying? Because I know I, I know several people, just like we all do, you know what I'm saying, that that did a loan that did a loan bid and when they get out they don't know what to do. And they and they, and they just stay stuck in position because they just let their mind frame stay stuck in position. So so what did you what did you do during ten years and getting out and, and just hitting the ground running and going hard and never looking back? Was it, the, man, was it was it your was it the circle? Was it your family? Man, I I will be honest with you, it it was a couple of things, man. Uh, one one it, it was you know part of the motivation was my family, man. More specifically, my my mother. You know what I'm saying? Because I saw I saw the toll it took on her. You know what I mean? Like when she would come see me or when I talked to her on the phone, you know. And and I tell people all the time, like the experience in itself and it might sound crazy but the experience in itself and in the different lessons i learned during the course of that time period like like i wouldn't trade that for anything the bro i was i was 18 when i when i caught my case i was 19 Mm -hmm. by the time i got sentenced you know what i'm saying i come home I come home, I was 29. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, so I I spent a a large portion. I mean, I was still a teenager, bro. You know what I'm saying? I was a year out of high school (laughs) when all that went down. You know what I'm saying? So, bro, I I was still young, you know, so I did a lot of growing through that particular time period. And I did a lot of self-analyzing and reflecting on, on, like, man, and looking around me and seeing cats that's, twice my age man when i first came in this real talk it was a cat in my unit man that boy had been locked up 32 years you know what i'm saying mm. i'm like this dude been locked up longer than i've been living <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. and i'm like that's not the life i want you know what i mean like prison wasn't for me <laughs> you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. i because I, i'm i'm too much of 
one, I'm too stubborn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't like people telling me what to do, when to do it, how to do it. You know what I'm saying? I, I couldn't get with that period. I conform to it, you know, because ultimately I want to come home. So, you know, I can't keep bucking the system. I got to get with their program. You feel mm-hmm. me? Yeah. But ultimately, man, my, you know, my family was the motivation. But to be in truth, bro, the biggest motivating factor for me was myself. You know, I, I'm the type when I when yeah. I set my mind on something, man, I don't care what you put in front of me. I'm I'm going to do it. And I'm going to get it done. You know, mm. and I really I really reflected over the course of that time and prepared myself mentally, knowing that, man, right. when I get out of here, certain things I want to do. Like I wanted I, want, I ain't had no children at the time. I'm like, man, eventually I want some children. I want I want a family. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And so when I came home, bro, um, it was a struggle. You know, you you struggling for money. You know, and, and you, you get tempted, like, well, you know, man, I could go, you know, make me a quick little move over here, you know, mm-hmm. get some bread right quick. Yeah. You know, but I'm yeah. I'm looking at I'm looking at long term, like this is what I want to do long term. You know what I mean? So the biggest motivating factor for me, bro, was you you really have to set your set yourself up mentally. You have to prepare yourself mentally in in the mindset of thinking that, man, when I get out of here, it might be a struggle. You know what I'm saying? I might have to struggle and and live a certain way. You know, it don't yeah, mean yeah. you got to, right? Because, like I say, it go back to what we say earlier. Like a struggle, we have a struggle mentality to a lot of in a lot of regards, right? Well, you might come out here, man, and 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 from day one hit the ground running, and things just pop for you. For some cats, it happened like that, but for most cats, it don't. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's a yeah. transition period where you're trying to feel your way through society and really find your way in society. And you just got to have a strong mindset, man. Like, it don't matter what get thrown my way, I'm going to stay on course. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a, of- a lot of people that have that mindset. We we know, yeah. a, we know a cat that's constantly going in and out of jail. And he. Oh, yeah, everybody know mindset. one. Yeah. You know yeah. Everybody know one of them. We know a few of them, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But. That's the biggest thing, bro. You just have to set your mind on, man. You have to have an objective and it don't matter what get in front of you. Like, you're not going to let anything sidetrack you. And even if you get sidetracked momentarily, man, you you do like Floyd say, you reel yourself in, you self-check yourself like, nah, man, I'm mm-hmm. tripping. You know what I mean? That's the thing. I, I'm, gotta, trying to get from, I'm trying to get to here. Yeah, you, you know? gotta have accountability, and and like you said, man, I check myself all the fucking time. Yeah, got to all the fucking time, man. I gotta constantly remind. It, you know, what I'm saying somebody made a post today, and I know I'm getting tired because my eyes water and shit. You know what I'm saying? But somebody made a post today, and they said, "Uh, you 35, uh, stop saying you have haters. Uh, just raise your family or something like that." With a joke behind it. And um, uh, and I was thinking like uh, it's gonna be always somebody like it don't matter if you're forty or fifty or something like that. Everybody's not gonna like you, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I mean, if that person, if that person, um, like if 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 I'm thirty, if I'm forty years old, and I want to tell myself that I have haters to motivate me to get me to that next level. Then it ain't no that sh- that shouldn't be a problem. You know what I'm saying? If that's yeah. what motivates me to want to become a millionaire or want to become, I mean, to do this or do that, then fuck it. Then that's how I go. That's that's just what I do. You know what I'm saying? But it, it's just. It's just a mindset, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just what it takes to get you to that next position and shit like that. So right, right. To me, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't listen to no negative shit. You know what I'm saying? If right. it's if it's some negative shit, I used to do the hood geography. People would want me to do that, but man, I mean it was funny, but it's just I don't have time to be, you know what I'm saying, doing like videos um mostly black people fighting and stuff like that, you know right. what I'm saying? Because to be honest with you, even though it was funny, I do want to see our people doing better things than just fighting and in the hood and then, you know what I'm saying, putting that image out, you know what I'm saying, certain people think that that's our environment, that's our lifestyle, that daily lifestyle. 
Yep. And, it's, and it's not like that. It's almost like Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle didn't want to see those skits, but I mean, didn't want to do those skits because of uh, the image. And he said it became that he wasn't laughing. Everybody else in the room was laughing, and it was like white people and all that. Right. You know I'm saying, and and that's how I definitely, and that's how I started feeling on my my videos. It was a lot of white people that was like loving the videos and stuff, and right, right. I just felt like that's not the image I want you to keep seeing from us. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not that's not who we really is. Even though the stereotype might paint that picture. I might think that's what all goes on in the North End or the or the South Park or something like that, but that's not the that's not the image that I really want to paint. So I kind of just laid you, off. You that really shit. just wanted to you, you really just want to change the narrative. Yeah, I mean, eventually I wanted to do podcasting, so I just said, let me just do enough videos so I could get the name out there a little bit, and then transfer this shit into doing like podcasting, you know, and stuff like that, and be like, oh, okay, that's the guy that did the videos. Oh, okay. He got a podcast because a lot of be honest with you in 2019 when I started shit, shit 80% of Beaumont or 80 90% of Beaumont didn't know what the fuck a podcast was. They didn't know what the hell that shit was, bro. They like a podcast. They like, oh, okay, cool and shit. They didn't know what the fuck that was, man. You know what I'm saying? And then it started taking wow. off, and you know, you start people start hearing about podcasts and Beaumont and all that type of shit. So, you know what I'm saying? And then a pandemic hit, so it was just kind of perfect. Or whatever and stuff like that. Right. So, and my boy Shane G, Shane Gidry, he hit me the other day. He wanted to, he said he wanted to do a podcast, but he didn't know the answers. He didn't know what kind of questions to ask me. And I say, man, I'm not trying to disrespect you, Shane, but you don't even know what kind of questions to ask me. You just say you want to start a show. Like, how do you want to do it? Like, do you want to just do audio? You just want to do video? You want to do Facebook only? I'm like, what do you want to do? Like, you know what I'm saying? Do you even have a logo? You got a net. He didn't have no logo. He didn't have no name. He didn't have, I was like, bro, you don't have the, you don't have the questions for me to answer for you and stuff like that. And so I told him, I said, what I do right now, you, oh, he was, and he wanted to know about sponsors. I said, bro, nobody ain't going to sponsor you if you don't even have one show out. They're not finna put man, money you, behind you. Like you a long way from sponsorship, That's man. What I, told her. I said, hey, bro, <laughs> you I say it's gonna take a minute to get where I went because where I'm at right now, because eventually, eventually I got to this point. But when I first started off, man, it was just the anchor app and my laptop and shit like that. That was it. Just speaking right. through the laptop or whatever. And and then it went to okay, let me do videos and put it on YouTube. Okay, all right, that's cool right there. All right, let me get people on Facebook. Okay, let me do Facebook Lives. Okay, but I don't want to do a regular Facebook Live. So I started rec looking at YouTube, and I discovered streams, and I was like, okay, let me do this. Oh, okay, yeah, they could do this. Oh, they could chime in like this. Okay, this going to be dope. So I did, I did it like that and shit. So, you know what I'm saying? It's all about growing and stuff like that. And eventually, now that I got to all this type of shit and this equipment and shit, eventually I want to do like live shows, like with an audience, like, like if us sure. three sat up on a stage or something and we had a conversation and we had the audience members kind of chime in too. That's yeah. the next level after, you know what I'm saying? Doing this for maybe like a year or whatever. I eventually want to do like some live shows at like a little lounge or something and maybe get P.O.P. or something to fucking record it and shit and and do it like that and see how it turn out and shit and, and just grow. That's dope. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just goals, man. You know, you knock out one goal and you got to keep writing the motherfuckers on the board and shit. So, mm -hmm. so that's, that's what it's all about. Man. That's why I be asking you later got. about the coffee thing, because I, I remember you telling me the, the plot and the plan and and coffee beans over here and shit and all that type of shit and it seemed like you was dedicated yeah, bro. so it's oh it's definitely coming man i got a um i think i shared it with you before i got a nice little old concept bro yeah that, yeah i remember you and, telling me about the concept yeah yeah you know that's gonna come in waves that first wave is is like i say we pushing for um april you know um there's still a couple things i gotta get in place like right now i got a um 
I got a company man putting together this logo. Um, I talked to a cat last week about some packaging things, but yeah, man, we pushed that. We pushed that first wave out, and from there, uh, the ultimate end goal. You know, um, like I said, I ain't gonna go into it too deep on here. Somebody might try and yeah, you know, yeah. steal it. Going too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Going too deep, you know, just get us a little skeet, a little skeet taste. <laughs> But uh, it's it's a dope concept, I think, bro. And I haven't saw anything like it. And I really think, um, you know what? I, I not to cut you off, Lalo. You know what I like about it? It's innovative, and it's nobody from that I know who thought of the concept to be like, man, coffee's a it's an untapped market from for like black people. I don't know any black person that wants to, and, and I'm I'm pretty sure they got. You know what I'm saying? Several black people over to America and shit. They got their own coffee and shit. But I'm talking about as far as Southeast Texas, you know what I'm saying? Or even in Houston, I don't know nobody who wants to start their own coffee thing. So I like the concept of you doing that. I think it's innovative. And I, think, I think it's pretty dope. I, I think you got something and shit like that. So Yeah, man, but what you know, I'm going to tell you what's even crazier, bro. You know where the home of coffee is, right? Where what? I said, you know what coffee, the home of coffee is, huh? Colombia, huh? Uh, Ethiopia. Oh, for real? Yeah. Yeah, man. Ethiopia. You networking out there? Man, we, we trying to get us a plug, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, who, is we need a, who is we? Yeah. Now, when I say we, I mean me. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You know what? I made a post on my podcast and I said, we, we back forever. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to say we. I wanted to put, say I, but we sound better. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Hey, yeah, Ken, but before we wrap it up, so what's yeah. up with the what's up with the uh with the clothing, bro? What's up with the six ways? Oh, somebody hit me. Man. Somebody hit me the other day on IG and said, "Hey, you know who the six? What is it? Six ways of Sunday. Six ways of Sunday. They say, well, you who is that?" Six and I ways, say, oh, six ways from Sunday. Six ways from Sunday. And I say, oh, that's Ken. He got his own thing or whatever. She said, oh, okay, all right. Yeah, I didn't know who that was and stuff. So, yeah, man. I said, uh, <laughs> what's up with that, though? Man, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to release probably like, uh, either more, either March or April. You know what I'm saying? And uh, well, what is yeah, it going to consist I'm, of? I'm trying to, shirts. Well, I'm, and... I'm, try, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do shirts and. Shirts and shorts to start starting off with, us, mm-hmm. mama. like little uh, like outfits, shirts and shorts. Yeah. Then going from there, go, going hoodies and hoodies and stuff. You know. Okay. Okay. I and feel that. The, the reason why I, I say uh, six ways from Sunday is because you know, from 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 Sunday to Sunday is uh, you know, Sunday to Saturday is six days, and you 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 out there trying to get it six ways mm-hmm. before the next Sunday. You know what I'm saying? No, no matter how, no matter how you get it, you're trying to you're trying to attain that, attain those goals. So if you got to do it six ways, then do it six ways. So you got you you got six days to do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you. I so, like the concept. Yeah. So, um, I, I'm I'm still doing a little a, a little brainstorming, man, and uh, but it's gonna it's gonna be out this year for sure. Well, man, look, I ain't gonna uh, lie, man. Wifey, she hungry. I'm we gotta, I gotta make sure she's straight and shit, man. But oh yeah, yeah I appreciate ahead, y'all coming on here doing this. I say it's a test run, to be honest with you, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna edit like the beginning and the end of it. You know what I'm saying? Well, not really the end, but edit some parts and shit, and I'm just gonna uh, eventually. Oh, post you really, it. Gonna, you, you really, you really gonna put this out? Yeah, I'm probably put it out like next week or okay. something like that. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. Okay. I'm just All gonna right. like chop it up a All few right. things and shit, and then um, I'll put it out. There. I'll see how I want it. I don't know if I'm gonna put it. I'm probably gonna put it on YouTube and just the the kickback page itself because I'm okay. trying to get people to come over to just that page or whatever, and mm. not my main page. Right, right. Page. So yeah. I'm probably just gonna post right. this on the podcast page because that's what I'm gonna start doing. Like if I do recorded things. Like this, it's just gonna go straight on the podcast page, so people can be like, "Hey, did you do something?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's on the podcast page." Oh, okay, go like right. it and all that type of shit. So that's what I'm gonna do. Right. And like I said, with this right. new stream and using the mic and all this type of shit and whatever and the call in and stuff, I want to make sure it was straight 
for my first show. Right. And you know, Black uh right. Black hit me too. He he coming on the show. Bob. Yeah, he hit me. He wanna come on the show. I told him I might do another, I'm gonna do a show March the fourth. He wanna come on the show. He mm-hmm. wanna talk about you the know trucking. Saying, the trucking and starting his own thing. Cause you know, a lot of, that's like the that's like the the hottest thing right now, you know what I'm saying? Blacks getting into getting their CDL Black. and doing trucking and shit. So Black has, Black has grown in a major way, man. Yeah, so I'm gonna yeah, have yeah, yeah. Homer, Homer doing Homer doing real good for himself, man. Yeah, so I'm he go come on, he go chop it up. Five, he, got, uh, he got him a book and shit. So you know what I'm saying? Yo, yeah. it's crazy just to think that Fox Black got a book and doing his trucking company when we think about him back in the hood and shit, y'all. But, yeah, you know, yeah, so Homer doing good, man. Uh, I'm proud little of that growth. Though. Got a little trucking company too. <laughs> yeah. So you know who you say, King? Five Deuce from uh Delaware. He, he got a little trucking company too, I think. Five Deuce, I remember that name. Yeah. I gotta see how he look. I'm bad on yeah. I'm bad on fucking Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think who you're talking about. Ain't really no five. Hey, I, I, I used to call him Pop. He's a hang with Mandy now. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, but uh, to, to to put it into conclusion, man, to the to the topic that we was on hip hop, um, <laughs> is that what we were on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. A long but, time ago, but, but look, to put it in conclu- into conclusion, though, do you think people like KRS One and Boogie Down Productions, man, like when they when they made this own uh, self destruction, do you think they foresee into the future, as in right now, speaking to the generation now? Nah, I think they was talking about back then, cause back then it was yeah. it was fucked up too. Dope when dope hit out in New York, it was crazy, just like it was in L.A. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, it was. You see them stories. You see them stories. I think they got some Netflix stories on how it was out there in New York when crack hit and everything. Yeah. you know. So yeah. they was already in self destruction. You know. Yeah, but right, I mean, right, right. I mean, that's just a song that can just keep get played over and over, man. It probably can get played ten years from right. now if we don't change our concept of things and stuff. So, and yeah. I grew up listening to KRS One too. He was one of the first people I started listening to. So that dude is a great. He's a great teacher, man. Yeah, I like KRS One. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. but man, like I said, man, y'all man, go ahead and do your thing, yeah, man. man. I appreciate you calling in, Ken. You know what I'm saying? Four nine two three three zero zero one seven. <laughs> 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 yeah.